Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not To Comic Book. This being a show we talk about TV shows and our adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Gotham. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode. We finally get our official introduction to Bane, which is interesting because immediately I'm like, oh, okay, so it seems like it's a combination of... Bane from, like, obviously, like, The Dark Knight Rises with more traditional Bane because it is the Venom. I don't know if it's, it doesn't seem like it's a continuous thing. Maybe that'll be something they do later on within this continuity to make it so that's like that. But for now, it looked like it was just, like, one injection of Venom and, bam, he's super strong and he's hulking and stuff like that. But we'll see if that's the case. You know, like I said, there are many different versions of Bane, you know, different across different continuities and stuff like that. But the moment, like, Walker was bringing up the whole, like, oh, pulling him out of pit thing, I was like, oh, that's interesting. I was like, oh, that sounds just like uh, Dark Knight Rises. I'm like, is that... I was like, no, because that's some of his storylines, not all of them, is it? Cause I thought that was something specific for Dark Knight Rises, but maybe that's from the comic book, too? I'm not sure. But nevertheless, then, like, you know, it's like Bruce gets kidnapped, General Wade gets kidnapped, uh... Jim does, all when un reunification was about to go down, and I'm like, okay, and the moment she's talking about this is all about being about Bruce, I'm like, wait, wait, I was like, it, is this what I think it is, and it turns out it is about Ra's al Ghul, I was like, what, that's crazy, I, it would have never, it didn't cross my mind to even think that, I was like, what is this, that's so interesting, and it seems like, Cause what, what threw me for a loop too? It's I was, I was like, is, it, is she Talia? And it's like, no, she's Nissa. I was like, what? Which is crazy, cause obviously if you're caught with Arrow, it's kind of spoilers, but Nissa popped up in this week's episode, so it's just like the timing is crazy. Oh, I love it, dude. That that kind of took me by surprise. I'm like, holy crap! So we are kind of doing the Dark Knight Rises, but I mean, it's been a while. But that was Talia in the movie, right? Um... I wasn't that well versed, in, you know. I, I know a little bit more about DC. I have a little more DC knowledge, you know, than I did back then. At this point in time, especially because of Arrow, so I'm like, dude, that's crazy. I mean, because I think typically a lot of times, like around the time Nissa's an adult, Talia is actually dead. I mean, she was technically dead in Arrow, but I think, I don't think, I think Nissa. I mean, I think Nissa didn't know what ever happened to her. But I think typically in a comic book, she's well, no, she can't be, can she? Because it's like, yeah, because she's isn't she. Damien's mom, Talia. That's I, I don't know. Maybe she's just not. I'm, I'm I'm just curious why they decided to do Nissa, not Talia. I guess because if they did do Talia, it'd literally be them doing uh, Dark Knight Rises, just like way earlier. Because there's no Batman. It's just Bruce Wayne. But it's so interesting that that's what the main point of all this was about. Wanting to destroy Gotham, keeping it from the mainland and all that, was because this is all about revenge. I mean, which is super messed up considering the fact is your dad wanted to die. He literally set everything in motion because he wanted Bruce to kind of be his heir. He wanted Bruce to kill him because it's like he was tired of the immortal life that he had. So... That's interesting, and it's kind of sad that Bruce has to suffer the ramifications for it. Also, that Barbara ends up being the one who has to suffer the ramifications for it, too, because it's like, yeah, she gave, she gave you a helping hand with this whole uh, ending, you know. You know, she literally gave you the hand, helping hand with all of that. So that in itself was so interesting. And once again, it being a, an Al Ghul that ended up pulling Bane out of the pit, which I'm like, like, I did not know they had a connection prior to, like, the Christopher Nolan movies. I was like, holy crap. So, does, is that a comic book thing, or is that just kind of, like, something they're pulling from just because, you know, it's like, hey, it's a pretty big movie, so, like, why not pull from it? I mean, who knows? You know, because it's interesting, because I'm going in on a tangent, I do apologize, but typically what ends up happening is sometimes when something gets popular enough, obviously, in, like, you know, movies or TV shows, it becomes a comic book thing. It's happened with Smallville, it's happened with, you know, Harley's character in general, and she popped up in the cartoons first, and they were like, oh, she's so cool and so popular, they added her, she became a big thing in the comic books. Nevertheless, but it seems like it doesn't stop there either, because it seems like this whole Bane situation is because she's trying to carry out the League's mission. Because it, it kind of makes sense for her. She's trying to build an army to basically, you know, reshape the world. Because that's the League of Assassins, slash the League of the Shadows in this uh, case, are all about that. They're trying to create some world order, essentially. And that's what this whole thing is about. Like her trying to, you know, it's her, you know way of carrying out her father's, you know, wish and what he wanted. So that's what it's all about in this regard. But also it's about, you know, her personal vengeance against Bruce. And what better way to get vengeance against Bruce than having the city he loves and cares about destroyed. 
and obviously like Strange getting the opportunity to create more superhuman, super soldiers, super beings, of course he jumped at the opportunity because for him he thinks he is on the winning side of things. So now this adds an interesting context to what we saw at the very, very beginning of the season. It's like, okay, them going up against the army. I was like, oh, is that supposed to be Walker? It's like, no, because the general got, you know, chipped. And now he's also put in word to be like, yo, we need to destroy this city, reduce it to rubble. And then there's the whole situation of like, now that kind of adds more context to that scene. Because I was like, oh, was that Walker having her own army? And it's like, no, she's basically using the army as her army. And so they've got to like probably hold off until they're able to stop everything going out. If they can stop Walker and General Wade, or, you know, maybe they can get him to kind of cancel the order because no one else is going to listen. Because no one knows that he's been chipped. So everyone else is just following orders at this point in time, which sucks. Once again, you were so close. And I think she almost picked the perfect time to strike because she knew General Wade. That's why she's kind of been hiding out to the shadows now because she knew eventually general wade would come to hear himself it kind of also plays into the whole aspect of like yeah it kind of goes with the whole al ghul situation or rather just the league of shadows and assassins them kind of being like all over the place high ranking people you know being people in general like working from the shadows that's kind of the whole thing you know so never knowing who's really part of the league and who isn't it's interesting, too, because I didn't talk about that before, but now, I mean, now that it's here, it adds this interesting element, too, in this continuity being a thing of, like, uh, I love, like, personal connected stories like that because it's, like, well, the whole point is, like, because Jim and Eduardo have a past, that means in this continuity, Jim Gordon will always have a connection to Bane, which is interesting. Um, just, just giving them that personal connectivity like that is just, it just makes, it's going to add this interesting element to their history, essentially, in this continuity. So, just when you think about, like, the continuity beyond what the show will be, you know? Then there's a whole situation with Barbara, obviously she's ready to pop, and then it's like, hey, the submarine's ready, uh, and they were planning to leave without her, and he was like, we wouldn't dare leave without you in that bundle of joy, uh, so, but she stole apart, so they can't leave, and then Barbara goes to see Lee, and that's obviously... She's trying to rush, have the baby, and get out of there. But, sadly, Penguin and Ed find her, which I love it. Ed and Lee's first time seeing each other since season four's finale. It's been like a year, literally, and it's like, Lee, Ed. He's like, to be fair, you stabbed me first. I love that, because it's like, of course. Because uh, I, I didn't even realize that until they met. I was like, right, you haven't seen each other since then, have you? Because I'm sure, like, you know... Uh, Hugo had, you know, Lee off somewhere else, obviously, because they had her kind of stashed away. That was kind of like the whole point and everything, but I love it. And then Penguin's like, give me back the peace that you have. She's And Barbara being like, if you're going to torture me, there's nothing you can do that's worse than the pain that I'm in right now. And she's screaming from the contraption, contractions. And you just have Ed and Penguin just looking like, wow. Um, I also love that, like, Penguin's pointing a gun at her. And Lee's like, don't point a gun at the baby. He's like, what? No, I wasn't doing that. It's like, he's like, it was meant to just be like, you know, a general threat. And then Ed's like, yo, you did point the gun at the baby. He's like, fine, I'm sorry. I'm like, this is so good. I love it. And then working together to actually protect Barbara. And he's like, it's like, I mean, Penguin was like, why should, should we? She's like, chivalry? And also, if I die, you'll never find that boat piece. But it turns out Ed had it the entire time, but he stayed behind it. But he decided to stay behind because it's like, wait, were you staying behind the hell of Barbara? No, it was for Lee, which that adds an interesting element to this, too, because it's like Ed and Lee in this continuity will have, a you know, a connection and it's going to be a situation of like, I think no matter how much time passes, he'll always kind of have a thing for Lee. So that's interesting. Um, obviously, there's a conversation about Alfred, uh, you know, him and Selena have that whole thing of like, you know, trying to, you know, because he wants to build a new Wayne Manor. But, you know, for him, it's like he wants it wants he wants it to become maybe it's like his last service to Bruce and Selena's like, what are you going to do, retire afterwards? He's like, no, I'll do what I always do. I'll stand guard by his side like always. It's so interesting because obviously it's kind of a whole thing of like, you know, essentially almost kind of seem like building off the past and stuff like that because Selena wants to blow up her past as well. But, you know, it's like no matter where you go in your future, the past will always kind of be there is kind of where you were. So it's always going to kind of follow you. So it's definitely going to be interesting. Obviously, like I said, with Selena and this continuity and everything is so uh, but it's kind of interesting to think about that. It was literally Alfred and Catwoman versus Bane. It's like, dude, holy crap.
Not something, not the showdown you thought. You wouldn't even think that that be something that would happen. Uh, Alfred got seriously messed up. It's like, man, Alfred continuously gets fucked up in a show. Um, it almost looked like he got like, what is it? The bat breaker, like the signature move that Bane does to break Bruce's back. Obviously, he didn't do it in this case. He just slammed Alfred against a pole like he's se severely messed up. I, I hope it ain't going to be a situation of like after everything Alfred's been through coming back from the brink of death. Like we're going to do this now, especially when he's got so much planned out, wanting to be by Bruce's side. I hope that's not the case because that would suck. And then you had, you know, lo and behold, Barbara and Lee make it to the sirens, and it's like, lo and behold, all the girls there are killed, which is like, well, it makes sense, because for, you know, well, for one, they stand in the way of Nyssa getting towards Barbara, but it's also the situation of they're all traitors to the League, so of course she's going to kill them, you know, so... I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that just kind of represents the fact is that, I mean, she was kind of referencing, like, the League is kind of everywhere all over the world. I mean, even with him being dead, it didn't stop the League from existing, which is so interesting, too, considering the fact is she is the one that kind of took over, considering the fact is, like, even in Arrow. So it's just interesting how that kind of ends up being the case. Well, no, because actually, I've, well, she ended up taking over temporarily long enough to kind of dismantle it in Arrow, because I'm about to say, I forgot, Malcolm took over after, uh, uh, Roz, or Raish, in this case, uh, was taken out of the picture, so, it's interesting, like, obviously, the resources are still there, so she can still kind of control that, it's not like the League ever really 100% died, there's agents all over the world, you know, that's kind of the whole thing, like, and that's definitely interesting to see how this is all going to finish up, because obviously Penguin and, you know, uh, Ed have the peace, but obviously, like, the word goes out, and Gotham's starting to explode, I'm assuming the fact is that Penguin and Ed are gonna try and escape, but the submarine got destroyed, so there's no getting out for them, that's what I'm kind of leaning into thinking, so, it is kind of sad, like I said, because even, Ed, uh, Jim at the beginning of the episode was like, yeah, I kind of don't know. Like, he kind of had the feeling like something was going to go down here, and it turns out it did. Like, you know, the situation just went from like, hey, we're, yay, we're almost, oh, nope, everything's kind of screwed up. So, it's definitely going to be interesting. I'm curious to also see what's going to happen with the whole taking down Bane situation. Who's going to be the one to do, do it? Is it going to be Bruce? Are we going to have like a showdown between Bruce and Nyssa? Like, dude, it's going to be crazy to see how this all goes down. Like I said, we literally have Gotham burning again. Um, obviously, obviously, I almost skipped over it, too. Like, the baby was born. Obviously, Barbara, um, which is definitely going to be interesting, because it's like, oh, they haven't even given her a name yet, which, which once again, I feel it in my heart. I hope I'm wrong, especially because Lee and her had that whole moment of, like, hey, the fact is, Jim's not going to take your baby from you. The fact is, you know, it's like, Jim will be there to help, and so will I if you let me. And even Barbara being like, yeah, this is weird. Uh, and she's like, I know. And it's like, you know, but like, hey, here's Auntie Leah. I'm like, dude, this, is, this situation is crazy. Also, side note, that hallway scene, like, I love they kind of do like a first-person view of her literally in contractions at points, and she's shooting at the guys, and like in a wheelchair and everything. I'm like, that's super cool. It's like... Because uh, Lee was telling, you know, Barbara, she doesn't have to be a criminal, which is the case. But the fact is, they have that. I'm like, dude, dude, I I felt it. I was like, she's not going to make it through this. The reason why the baby gets named Barbara is because Barbara dies. Like, I'm sure Nissa's going to kill her. And I'm like, I hope that's not the case. That sucks. Especially because she's literally died before and come back. Which is ironic, considering the fact is that the one that's going to end her is going to be... Nissa, considering it was her dad that brought Barbara back in the first place, so it's just interesting how, and it's also, well, I guess the irony was also the fact is he's the one that brought her back, and she was the one that basically helped kill him, so and that was something to actually think about, too, so I hope it doesn't come down to that, but the fact is the baby doesn't have a name yet makes me think, like, they'll probably end up being like, I wonder will they ever tell them her Barbara everything about her mom, or will they just tell her, them her some of the good stuff? We'll, we'll ultimately have to wait and see. But dude, we are literally down to the last two episodes of the series. I'm so excited to see what happens. I missed 
this apparently, but I was looking up there. Apparently, like, the show's going on a little bit of a break, which is crazy to me. Maybe there's reasons behind this. I could be wrong, but the date I was seeing is saying it won't be back until April 18th. So it's taking a couple weeks off. And then, like, the next step, then, you know, the series finale will be, like, on the 25th, obviously, like, the week after. Why is it taking a break? I have no idea. It just, just apparently it is. So I hope. I don't, like I said, that could be wrong. Um, but. Either way, I'm very excited to see how just where we go from here in these last two episodes. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Today, it's how we meet. Be happy, be safe, look like to the force, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.